Good almost afternoon. I am Wanda Horner Carlson, the board president, and I would like to call this 2023 Unity North Spiritual Center annual meeting to order. And Reverend Kathy will open us with an opening prayer. So let's just take a moment and get centered still. Loving Spirit, we give thanks for this opportunity to come together for the greater good of Unity North Spiritual Center. And so we bless this meeting and we give thanks that we are open, receptive, and responsive to the living spirit of truth, that we are aligned with one another and with spirit in peace and harmony. We are aligned with perfect divine order and guidance. And so we say thank you, thank you, God, for a great meeting. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Kathy. And now we'll just briefly go over the ground rules. And these are the same thing that the board follows every month in our board meeting. I'll read the ground rules and then ask if you agree by a raise of hand. They are confidentiality, speak from the heart, speak the truth, hold each other with a compassion, refrain from cross-talking or interrupting. If you agree to uphold these ground rules, please raise your hand. All right, thank you. For those of you who may not know, I'd like to introduce the Board of Trustees for 2022, and the board included Reverend Kathy, myself as the board president, Aaron Casper Frett as the Vice President, Moira Bailey as the Secretary, Martha Burkhart as Treasurer, and Christine Grinzel as a Trustee. The Board of Trustee terms that are up this year are Martha, Moira, and myself. And now I would like to call Moira, Board Secretary, to read the 2022 minutes. Hello, everyone. My name is Moira, and I have held as a board secretary for the past three years. I will be reading the Unity North Spiritual Center annual meeting minutes from February 20th, 2022. Wanda Horner Carlson called the meeting to order. Those present were Kathy McCall, Martha Burkhart, Moira Bailey, Tracy Roloff, Wanda Horner Carlson, and a quorum of UNSC community members. One person was absent as a board member, which was Aaron Casper Frett. UNSC annual meeting minutes for November 2020. 2020. Darlinda motion to approve the November 8th, 2020 annual meeting minutes. Charlotte seconded and the motion was carried. Overview of the year 2021. Wanda shared updates on the following. We updated our air filtration system to be compliant with the latest guidelines and to make the building safe when we return. The parking lot was striped, sprinkler repairs with other small building items, virtual classes and meetings, a parking lot concert with a raffle, good for you days in September, and a reopening team making decisions and presenting to the board for a safe return. For the minister's report, adult ed classes were held virtually, series and special events, virtual and local musicians, Unity North staff members, Larry Peterson as facility manager, Brandy Reynolds as administrative assistant, Kathleen Bailey as youth and family director, and Outreach Director. <clears throat> Sunday, March 13th, Unity North reopened, and Unity North held two visioning nights for the community. Youth and Family Ministry Report, lessons continue to be held in person and on Zoom with low attendance. Community Outreach, Adopt a Family, Hands of Kindness, Family Promise, and Family Table drive through continued. 
the financial report. Martha Burkhart <coughs> reviewed the annual budget <coughs> with the UNSC community. A note was made that the annual report was based on a calendar year, January 1 to December 31, instead of a fiscal year, November 1 to October 31, as it was in the past. We realized a net gain of $49,856, which includes a $34,205 bequest. The budget was approved on a motion by Kathleen Bailey, seconded by Noel Labine, and the motion was carried. Elections to fill the open UNSC board positions. In order to select new board members, a nominating team was created. This year, Moira Bailey, volunteered as the board member with the help of Reverend Kathy. They both selected Kathleen Bailey and Nancy Helvig to serve on the team. Nancy Helvig introduced the board candidate, Christine Grinzel. Christine Grinzel invi invited to introduce herself and share why she wished to be a board member of the UNSC and the vote was taken. A vote by acclamation for Christine Grinzel to serve on the board Wanda shared to select two, shared two new members to be on the nominating team this year. Those members are Noel Labine, Darlinda Alexander, and the motion was carried. There was a Q&A opportunity that was open to all, <clears throat> and the meeting was adjourned on a motion by Wendy Erickson, seconded by Charlotte Fournier, and I respectfully submitted this report on that day. Thank you, Maura. Excellent job as always. And now I would like to call for a motion to accept the 2022 annual meeting minutes as just read by Moira. And do we have a second? All right. Can you stay where they are? Oh, okay. Um, Darlinda. And Darlinda and Sue. All right, all in favor, please raise your hand. All right, the motion has passed. Thank you. And now I will do my board president report, which this year I've decided to um, focus on the fundraising that we did um, this year. So I'll go through the three main fundraisers that we had here at Unity North this year. First was the Unity North Stone Soup Virtual Silent Auction. This was our first chance to try out an online auction. Um, did some research, found a company that was very um, easy to use, price was right, so we set up our first auction. And we ended up with 76 donations and those donations received 163 bids. And the amount we raised was $2,500 for our first time out with that. So great success to that, and thank you to everyone who participated as a donor or a buyer. And the second item that we did was the All You Need Is Love event. And that was a flash flea market in the parking lot, um, a hot dog stand and a hot dog lunch, and then um, a Beatles song concert afterwards with Amy and Adams. Um, at the flea market, we all had a lot of fun buying each other stuff. We had a few outsiders <laughs> come in, but mostly we just really had a fun time buying each other stuff. And um, had a great lunch, and then came inside for the music with Amy and Adams. And in that event, it was about a four hour event, and we raised $800. So that was success as well, and a lot of fun. <laughs> And then the last thing that we had uh, at the end of the year was our Unity North Razzle Dazzle Holiday Silent Auction. Again, we used the same platform and did um, a silent auction and this time themed it around holidays, things that could be gifts or um, holiday related. And this time we had 53 donations and they received 248 bids. So a lot more bids than the time before. So I think there were some hot items out there that got a lot of bids this time. I believe it may have centered around baking. <laughs> and that event raised us $2,020. So that was 
again a success and rounded out the year with over five thousand dollars raised in these events that all of you were a part of and I just want to express my appreciation for that um, you're the ones that made it a great success and now I would like to call on Reverend Kathy to give her minister's report. All right, well, good afternoon. I'm grateful to be here today with all of you. And this is um, my third annual meeting with you. Last year, we changed from a fiscal to calendar year, which I'm very happy about. So this is our second annual meeting in February rather than November. In 2022, we spent two months, half of January through early March, meeting virtually because of critically cold weather. So far, this winter has been milder, <laughs> knock on wood, and we've been able to continue with in-person services as well as virtual. Also, last year's report about 2021 was different since so much was about reporting on COVID recovery and reopening. And this past year, 2022, has been a transition year as we have lived the reality of the after effects of the pandemic and begun to grapple with plans to move forward and take some action. And I'll address that later when I speak of our expansion team. But first of all, we have vision, mission, values. And we set the stage for um, action in the spring when a group came together to discern new vision and mission statements and values. And these are, in a sense, the DNA of who we are. And they serve as a guide for all that we do. We've been saying them during every service. And here they are for you to see again. And I won't speak to them at the moment, but you um, should know them by heart now, right? But, um, and then next, I want to just thank our Sunday producers. Next slide. And these are there, our beautiful Sunday producers. Uh, Chris Italiano, of course, um, and Tracy Roloff, Martha Burkhart, Nancy Helvig. They've all helped with both in-person virtual hybrid services. They've been an incredible team. And then now this year, we're bringing on additional help with Randy McLaughlin. And um, you knew her as Reynolds before. Her last name now is McLaughlin since she married. And um, she's our administrative assistant jumping on this team. So we're searching for additional help as well. If any of you are inclined to assist, you don't have to know Sam, but you have to be able to kind of follow through on a little bit of technical aspect. So let us know if that interests you. Um, I didn't do slides for each group I'm going to mention, so please just forgive me in advance. We can just keep it here for a minute. But also, Sundays this um, past year included our incredible worship assistants, Nola Bean, who's out of the country today, Rhonda Italiano, Wanda Horner Carlson, and Wendy Erickson. In addition, we've had support from our prayer chaplains, and they've con continued to pray with you by phone or Zoom every Sunday. They are Wendy Erickson, Nancy Helvig, Susan Marie Lawler, and Rebecca Thompson from Redondo Beach. And thank you to them. And if anyone has interest in becoming a prayer chaplain, please talk with Wendy or with me. I'm grateful Darlinda Alexander continued as our excellent usher coordinator, training and overseeing a great team of ushers who are appreciated. Also, Diana Ramsayer stepped back in to oversee coordinating send Sunday snacks. Since in the last half of 22, we have gone back to social time again in Fellowship Hall after services. That has probably contributed some to the increasing attendance. Um, you know, we like to socialize and we like to eat, right? So thanks to everyone who's setting up coffee and bringing weekly treats. Through the year, Brandy and I have kept a very flexible schedule, working both from home and in the office each week. And uh, we actually work together just famously, very smoothly in that respect. It's also been great working with our board of trustees. They are a wonderful, dedicated group of people. Um, Wanda, our board president, and I have worked together regularly on the agenda and other projects and have had a very harmonious relationship. And at this time, I want to call, actually, uh, interrupt my 
my uh, report a little bit and just um, have Wanda stand and bring up Martha, um, two who are leaving. Now Moira's term is also up, but she is rerunning, so she doesn't get to come up here yet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I want to acknowledge both both uh, Martha and Wanda for being just wonderful board members. Martha has been president and treasurer before, probably a number of times, but uh, she made a fabulous treasurer. She did. She went the extra mile, went beyond the usual reports that Chris generated as bookkeeper, and created beautiful graphs for us every week so we could really see the picture. And um, it's just has wonderful insights and wisdom. And so thank you, Martha, for all that you've done on the board. And Wanda, yes, let's continue. And Wanda, you've been a fabulous board president. She also came with a lot of experience. She um, was at the, um, you have to help me remember the name. I always forget the name. Unity the, Spiritual Center of Central Minnesota. Yes, Unity Spiritual Center of Central Minnesota in, in uh, Sartell. Um, when she, before she came, working with Reverend Barbara, as, and so she was board president there, and that really made a big difference. Uh, she brought her experience and her skills and her consciousness. And so we've been a great team, and it's been wonderful working with her. So please give her a big hand. We will miss her. And we just want to present each of you with a, a little gift Thank you. on behalf of the board and everybody here. And so let's do our special unity blessing for them as they go forth in their new adventures. And it's... Um, um, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Together, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Thank you so much, both of you. All right, well, they will be missed. Um, now, just... All right. So um, through the time of hybrid church, it's been essential to have a great website. And we can thank Tracy Roloff for that. Remember, wave Tracy. <laughs> she has spent so much time and energy working um, also with Unity Worldwide Ministries to upgrade our website. Did a beautiful job. The format looks great. And we also thank you, Tracy, for the upcoming events that you send out monthly and the newsletter as well, which Darlinda first prepares. And also a special thank you to Charlotte Desai, who now lives in Minneapolis, um, but continues to support us with her beautiful flyers and graphic art online. Thank you, Charlotte. <laughs> and we've continued to hold classes virtually this year. Um, and we can put up the, the next slide now. When former uh, adult education director Anne resigned, she trained Brandy to do the technical part of her job. Along with Chris, she helped Brandy to learn acuity and our class registration system, and Brandy has acted as staff at some of the virtual classes now. And so this point, so um, I got my notes out of order here. So as you can see, some of the classes from this past year included Moving Through Grief, Learning to Love Yourself. Carl Schlatterbeck um, continued all year with his shaman courses until November, and then stepped back and now does the classes on his own, no longer under the Unity umbrella. But we're very grateful for all of your teaching and support, Carl. I think you're still with us today, so thank you so much. And more classes. Um, next page, we had an overview of the Old Testament taught by Rhonda Italiano. I taught karma and reincarnation. And then next, we had a series called Journey into the Mystery and a class based on, uh, also based on the book How to Know God by Deepak Chopra. And there was a visit from nationally known Unity Minister Reverend Blair Tabor, who did a workshop on the mystical intersection of the 12 powers and the Lord's Prayer. And you can just leave it here for a minute. Gina Booth continued to host the Monday night chat. 
and then sharing it with Wendy over the summer, and they brought that to a natural end uh, before the close of the year. And another ending was the men's group. Jim Fox ran it for several years and stepped back last summer. And we still have not had anyone come forward to re-energize it, but if any men are interested, please let, let me know, or if you know of any men. And we still have some others who show up monthly, periodically to teach. I'd like to thank uh, Cindy Huberty for stepping up as team leader of the healing team the year before, in addition to her position handling accounts payable. Cindy's here today. It's great to see you alive. <laughs> so over some months, she held steady as that healing team sifted and redefined themselves and their vision. And they took a break in early 22. Uh, they revisited it in May and several times. Um, this past year, but the energy is just not there. A few people have asked for healing services, but there are not enough healers, nor is there the energy to move that forward now. That often happens when change occurs in a ministry and new birth in other areas begins to take place, and it could recycle back at another time in the future. So if that's a, a something you hold in your heart, then you know hold that in your vision as well. Um, then New Beginnings, we started movie nights. Um, I would have a slide for that one, but I'll, I'll let you know on the next slide. And we began having social time after services again, as mentioned. Beginning in late August, we had the movies Little Buddha, then Inside Out, and Eat, Pray, Love. We tried to have the Nutcracker in the Four Realms at Christmas in December. We had to cancel twice due to weather. Our next one will be coming up on March 10th. And it's for, uh, more of a family one. It's an animated Disney show in Kanto for kids and adults with lots of great messages and fabulous songs by Lynn manuel Miranda. It's a great film if you haven't seen it. And that'll be shown again Friday, March 10th, so mark your calendars. And we're also thinking of game day on a Sunday after church service on alternate months. We were thinking movies one month, Game, game day the next. So let us know how, we want to know how you feel about that. So it um, seems like game day was a big hit. People really had fun. And next slide as musicians, I just want to give a shout out to all of our great musicians. This past year, we've not, this past year we've not had virtual musicians for Sunday services, unfortunately. We miss some of the great ones like Karen Drucker and Daniel Namod and others, but getting that technology going smoothly for hybrid church was, was enough to deal with. And we, we hope to have maybe a concert, concert from a few of those in the future. And we have great local musicians, Claire Vandekromert, Amy Ann Adams, Bill Mann, Bruce Menier bell Judy Venar, Braden Canfield, Grace McDonough, uh, Nancy Helvig, and we'll look forward to some, as I said, more virtual concerts in the future. And then staff, same picture from last year. Um, all of the above mentioned in my report today would not work nearly as well without a fabulous staff. It has worked very smoothly having a facility manager, Larry Stevenson, or Peterson, I'm sorry, and an administrative assistant, Brandy McLaughlin. And um, Larry is the perfect part-time facility manager because he's been in the background helping out, also advising Darlinda from time to time when she was still here. He already knew the building well and was able to enter in very smoothly into the position. And I felt very relieved and confident with him working behind the scenes. And Brandy is multi-talented and amazing. She's also both funny and sunny. <laughs> very skilled and an absolute joy to work with. Also, I'd like to thank Jennifer Flynn for her ongoing uh, care of the yard. She fills it with lots of love. And finally, I want to honor Kathleen Bailey for her incredible strength and persistence and stability as she persevered shepherding our youth and family ministry through the aftermath of COVID, as well as being the director for outreach. She's continued to stay in touch with the parents and kids through this past year teaching Sunday school doing hybrid youth ministry, and she's connected with Family Promise and Family Table drive through meals, so we could still support those families needing homes and jobs and food in our community. 
course, she has had her team of teachers and volunteers, especially Moira and Mary Sorensen and all those who show up for outreach as well. We thank all of you. And thank you, Kathleen, for all that you do. Your compassion for children and parents and those in need is a, a lightning rod in this ministry for the power of love and service. I'm blessed, blessed to have you and your wonderful daughter, Moira, as well. So uh, we're a smaller group than we used to be, supporting the same size building as we did at double the size. So during COVID in 20 and 21, we had two separate government loans, and last year we did not, and it took fundraising to help make the difference. It took all of you and your loving support. And this year it will take some extra help as well, some creative fundraising, some divine guidance, some just inner questioning of, of what each one of us can do. So we urge you to keep that in mind as you continue to support Unity North through this, this year. We know a collective prosperity consciousness can make an amazing difference. And finally, one more slide, <laughs> uh, the expansion team. And um, I'll hold on just a sec. During last summer, we had a call to action, which came in the form of Rhonda saying Serena wanted a new church because she was missing other kids in Sunday school since there were too many days that she was the only one. And Chris and Rhonda began their own process to see if they could stay and help bring that about. And that elicited the board and, board and youth ministries leaderships process as well. And we formed what we first called the brainstorming team and later changed the name to expansion team. It included Chris and Rhonda, the board, the youth leaders, myself, and a few other longtime members who showed interest. And we've met every four to six weeks, and out of our meetings, we called together a community gathering last September to inform everyone what we were doing. Sadie Grinzel became part of the team and invited former YOUers to show up, which they did. And both Sadie and Paige Ray spoke and inspired us about the importance of youth ministry and the difference it's made in their lives. In this process, we also learned we were not the only church struggling with COVID, uh, with fewer adults and kids. In fact, we learned not only the entire movement, but most churches have had only 50% of their congregants return. So the descriptions mentioned on the slide, now we can start bringing them up, of what the expansion team is doing is in part where we're headed for the future. So growing Unity North, increasing our attendance, seeing with new eyes, brainstorming ideas, hosting community gatherings, beautifying our facility, marketing our ministry, spreading the word, expanding our consciousness, building our youth and family ministry, facilitating friendliness, welcoming new team members, promoting Unity teaching. That's a lot for a team to take on. And obviously, we'll do what we can do of all of that as we go. And uh, anyone who wants to uh, join the team is welcome to join us anytime. Just let us know. Um, there is starting to be a slight improvement in attendance and commitment again. Um, and I think that did have a lot to do, too, with it actually started to begin right after we, we started Speak Our Special Affirmation, which is the last slide here. And that's um, what we speak every Sunday. So every, anyone, as I said, is welcome to um, join our expansion team. And please let me know if you have interest. And our next meeting will be on Tuesday, February 28th. So it is my honor and my joy to serve as your minister. You are an incredible unity congregation. And I'm grateful to be here at this amazing time in the history of Unity North and the unity movement. And I continue to be filled with optimism and faith for the future. And I trust that spirit is guiding and directing us in all that we do going forward. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Taking your notes. Don't take my notes. All right, thank you, Reverend Kathy, very much for that update. And now I would like to call Kathleen Bailey for the youth and family um, update as well.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, an update on youth and family ministry from 2022. At the start of 2022, YES, Uniteens, and YOU met virtually only until March. And then in March, YES and Uniteens went hybrid, offering in person and Zoom options every Sunday. YOU remained virtual only through April. And then at the end of the 2020 school to school year, our YOU sponsors, Becca and Shelby, stepped down. Summer Sunday School for YES and Uniteens was every other weekend, led both by Kathleen and Moira. And we began the 2022-23. I'm having a hard time saying 23 still. Began the 22-23 school year in September and continued to be hybrid for YES and Uniteens with attendance ranging anywhere between one and six kids. We also have seen an uptake in a attendance in the nursery, which is always fun. And we continue to look for help with YOU waiting for possible sponsors. The YFM programs are a place of unconditional acceptance, love and support. If there's anything that you would make it feel, you would make it feel more that way for you or your family, please reach out to me. And I thank you all for your support for <coughs> our young people. Now I'm going to step right into outreach. Outreach news. Family table. In 2022, we served our first family table meal in March, and we continued through October. We served approximately 512 meals via drive through in those six months. June was our lowest count of 49 meals, and October was our highest at 105. And we averaged eight volunteers doing this every single month. Thank you all, those volunteers. Family Promise. We continue to support the hospitality rotation five times in the calendar year. In September, our partner church, Roots and Branches, had to break away from serving Family Promise, so we stepped up our commitment and fulfilled both the meals and the supplies needed for every rotation, and we continue to doing that each um, rotation. We've supported one to four families throughout the year. Our support is in gift cards rest to restaurants for families, along with um, a gas card and either cleaning supplies, laundry supplies, um, school supplies at one point, and just some crafts things for the families to use while they sheltered either in um, a hotel or if, um, they were part of our stabilization um, program, then they were in um, homes and we would make sure that we'd get those goods, to, those items to the families as well. Adoptive family, we continue to support. In this December, we supported three families and those families, they had a very difficult year in experiencing house fires and job losses. By December 19th, this congregation found 100 and plus gifts to be wrapped and we delivered them to all the families. So thank you all for that lovely support for the um, adoptive families. <laughs> Hands of kindness, um, which is, goes all over the board. In 2022, our community supported three meal tra trains for members within our community, um, assisted in some financial um, advice, I'll say, to individuals both within our community and our greater community and continue to drive our community members to and from important appointments. We also supported the greater community with 70 gas and or food cards for a total of 1,750 in our own community with 38 gas food gift cards for $1,100. So the support, uh, the financial support is uh, tremendous from our community to our community and our greater community and also within our own community members. And I thank you all. Um, and that is the end of my report. Thank you, Kathleen. Now I would like to call our treasurer, Martha Burkhart, to give the financial report. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you very much for all 
your trust and your support has been awesome. And uh, these years have been challenging for many reasons, right? We, uh, we had new leadership, we had the pandemic, and we switched from uh, uh, the, our fiscal year's timing. So it's, if you see, as you see these numbers, keep that in mind, sometimes timing is, is an issue. Um, my main purpose as we went through these transitions was to keep us as a board um, an, an eye on, on, on a higher perspective of what was really going on. Because as we leave our, our um, beliefs and principles of unity, of abundance, and co-creation, and, uh, and manifestation, we needed to, to make sure that we were looking at. So um, to keep some kind of perspective, we, we kept comparing what, what, is the, what was the normal before the pandemic and what is going on now? Because uh, we we tremendously blessed in many different ways, right? But mainly because through the pandemic, not only the, the issues about uh, attendance and all those things, but also we received bequests and loans and, uh, or grants because those loans were forgiven. So... Um, that has affected our, our perspective of what our normal is. So now that 2023 is, is basically normal, it's going to be uh, more critical that we keep that eye. But having said that, uh, if we go to the first slide, <laughs> thank you, uh, for the um, total revenue, right? Yes. So this is a comparison of 2021 and 2022. Now, as I was telling you, you can see the biggest differences in the tithing love offerings and donations are the bequest, and, and um, basically that's uh, the difference. Our tithing has been remarkable, stable, remarkably stable with ups and downs. You know, that's, what, that's why it's very hard to predict what happens month to month because tithing changes and expenses changes depending on snow removal, uh, many things. And the other thing that happened during the pandemic that as we were heading to the pandemic, we needed to change equipment and things uh, in the building, you know, our HVAC, our, our furnaces and our filters to, to be uh, able to deal with the pandemic and the air purity in the building and the equipment to be able to do hybrid, hybrid services. So all that is part of all challenging things that the board, this board, dealt with successfully, by the way. <laughs> so, and the other income, this is basically the loans that we got from the federal government. So to say, oh, why are we not getting those? Because you're not going to see those on 2023, of course. Uh, but keep in mind, this is what happened. Adult education was very similar. That, that difference is mainly the, one of the abundance uh, classes that we we had in 2021. Uh, fundraising, as, as Wanda pointed out earlier, that those are the, the big difference that we have happened in, in the last year. Um, any, in, so the total is, is very, um, I'm sorry, 2022 of $160,000, in 2021 of $183,695. For, from that, we can move to the expenditures, please. So this is um, comparing, again, the two calendar years, 2021 to 2022. The biggest difference that you're going to see here are the, uh, as I was telling you, the expenses we had to incur because of changes in our building, the furnaces, the filters, and the, and the equipment to be able to do the the hybrid services. For a total of $143,762 for 2022 compared to $161,749 in 2021. Um, from that, we move to our next, uh, our net revenue, I'm sorry. <laughs> a little nervous. Next slide. Um, for a hundred uh, total revenue in 2022 was 160,358, as we mentioned before, and the total expenses of 143,762. The changes that you see there is we both uh, got less money in uh, 2022 and spent 
less money in 2022 as well. That's just a message. Our financial position, there you go. Uh, and this is the, the um, comparison of what we have in our savings and our checking accounts. Uh, again, because of the, of the we're not going to be seeing the, the same uh, loans in the same way, right? We can manifest it in any other way if that's open. Um, we, our our um, cash flow has, has been different this year, and, and we have seen some, some changes. Tithing, again, tithing comes at different levels throughout the year. Uh, but we, we have been able to pay all, all our bills. As you can see, our mortgage has gone down by $14,199. And uh, with that, I don't know if we get any questions. Right? This is yeah. Yes, Sue? That effort had, had been started by, by Cynthia, my, my predecessor. Uh, we haven't done anything yet because we didn't know about the pandemic, but this is a good time to start looking into that and see how it could benefit us, yes. After all that. <laughs> Do you see your figures for 2022 being kind of a um, what 2023 will be based on? Would yes. We... The board did agree upon a, a budget to have an idea based on the history and the best guess that we could do, you know, given the changes that we were facing. So um, I, I'm happy to say, though, that we, even though um, we, you know, we estimated we we got more revenue in 2022 than we had predicted and uh, so i i expected yes granted if we don't get any more building big expenses but i encourage us as a community to look farther even you know like plan for an electronic billboard out there uh so so to attract so it, yes as far as normal expenses and normal tidying I, we don't see any any changes it's, been pretty steady throughout the years. So <coughs> thank you all this, all of our efforts. Anything else? If not, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. She has brought <coughs> great reports to us every month in the board meeting. It's much appreciated. And now, can someone please make a motion to accept the financial report for 2022? All right. Say the names. Okay. Um, we've got Ruth. Julie and Kay. Okay. Um, all right. And I think, I think we should thank Chris for doing all the financial reports too. Oh, yes. Yes, Chris has been behind the scenes with the finances and has supported Martha as well. And so we greatly appreciate all the work that you put into that. Thank you so much. All right. Now, all in favor of approving the financial report, please raise your hand. All right. And is there anyone that is opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you very much. And um, now we're going to have our elections for our new board members, as well as the new nominating team, and then open up the floor for discussion. We have three candidates for three open positions and one board member, Moira, who will be returning for a second term. Um, just for your information, board members serve a three-year term and can run for a second term for a total of six years. And at that point, they need to take a one-year break before um, running on, to be on the board again. In order to select board members, a nominating team was created. The nominating team includes the minister, one board member other than the president, 
and two congregants elected at the annual meeting the prior year. The two elected to the nominating committee last year were Darlinda Alexander and Noel Labine. Christine Brinzel was the board liaison with Reverend Kathy. And I would like to call on one of the team members, Darlinda, to induce, introduce our new candidates this year. Hello, everyone. Um, we, meaning the team, the nominating team, feel that we have an excellent selection of candidates for this coming uh, three-year term. And I'm going to first read off to you the names of those three candidates. And then after that, I will ask them one at a time to come up and share some information with the rest of you. So the three candidates we have at this time are Cindy Huberty, Jennifer Flynn, and Bill Roloff. So Cindy, I'd like you to come up first to this mic over here. And you can tell us why you are saying yes to serving on the board and also what you bring to the board. Go right up to the mic. Go right mic, up to Cindy. the mic. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay. Um, the reason that I think that I want to be on the board is um, that, well, a couple reasons. Um, I um, found out that the treasurer position is open, and that is a passion of mine. And um, so I have not been on the board for oh, probably 20 years or so. And I was a treasurer at that point. <laughs> um, so this was a good opportunity for me to, um, to do that. And um, like I said, I think um, being, doing the finance as, is just, it's a, it's a passion of mine. And I also very much enjoy working with Chris and Brandy. <laughs> so <laughs> having that continuing is going to be great. So I think that's everything. Thank you. Jennifer, would you come up, please, to the mic and, um, again, say why you are saying yes to this and um, what gifts you bring. <coughs> Sorry? And what gifts you bring to the position. I'm Jennifer Flynn. Um, also, I, I was thinking about how long I've been involved in Unity, and it's been about 20 years, and I have been nominated to the board before, and I've said no um, more than I've said yes, and it was, it was time to say yes. Um, I had some other responsibilities that wrapped up in my life, and so there was a, a vacuum there, and this, this came along, so I, I finally said, said yes. Um, I, I'm a pretty versatile person, so I'm sure I've got some gifts that will be useful on the board. I'm not exactly sure which one, but being versatile, I'll learn new skills as needed. Um, and I, I want to be on the board because I'm really kind of a worker bee type person. I like to pitch in and help do what needs to be done, um, serving community. And um, I also actually think that it might be fun. Um, it'll pro it'll probably be fun, and, be fun. <laughs> and selfishly, I'll learn a lot too, as well as uh, contribute. Thank you, Jennifer. We're really glad you said yes this time. <laughs> and the um, third individual is Bill Roloff, and he's not able to be here today, but Tracy's here, and um, I think most of you probably know that Bill and Tracy, our team, <laughs> and um, they've been involved with our community for many, many, many years, like maybe 28 or so, long time. And so when we asked Bill if he would consider serving um, on the board, he was actually very excited about it. He's very um, happy and eager to contribute what he can, and um, today he's at work, so that's why he's not here. But um, yeah, we're 
really glad for our three candidates because we think they're going to add a whole lot to our board. So thank you, and I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Darlinda, and to the entire nominating team. You did an excellent job. And since we have three candidates who have been vetted by the team for the three open positions, as well as one returning board member, we will now have a vote by acclamation by show of hands. If you agree that Jennifer Flynn, Cindy Huberty, Bill Rolla, and Moira Bailey should be on the 2023 Board of Trustees, please raise your hand. All right, the majority has ruled, and thank you to Jennifer, Cindy, Bill, and Moira for being willing to serve on the board. Yay. And now we will have the election of the nominating team for next year. And we need to elect two <coughs> team members for next year's or this year's upcoming team. The members start meeting three months prior to the annual meeting, and together they pick some possible candidates. If the prospective pro candidates agree, the team interviews them and then introduces them at next year's annual meeting. This team does not take a lot of time, and we will now accept nominations for this team. <laughs> Martha, are you willing to serve? All right, thank you. Is Martha, are you willing to serve? All right, thank Tracy, you. You say Tracy nominated Martha okay, Burkhart. Okay, Tracy has nominated Martha Burkhart, and she has agreed. Thank you. And um, now for our second team member, we'll accept nominations. You could ask if Darlinda's willing to do it again since she's here. Okay. Darlinda, are you willing to serve again? Yes, I am. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Darlinda has agreed to serve again. And so now let's have a vote by acclamation. If you agree that Martha Burkhart and Darlinda Alexander should be our new nominating team members, please raise your hand. All right. And if anyone disagrees, okay. all right. So, somebody's asking a question. Okay. Did someone online have a question? No, I'm sorry. I didn't take my hand down sure. quick enough after the affirmation. <laughs> All right, the majority rules. Thank you, and welcome to our nominating team, or welcome back. <laughs> and the team will be activated in November, so you can breathe easy till then. It's fine. <clears throat> and now we will have questions that Reverend and Kathy and I will be happy to answer, along with any of the other board members. And I also just want to express my gratitude for that you've given me for the last three years to serve this community. Um, I remember standing up here three years ago and saying that uh, serving on a board is always a leadership growth and spiritual growth and um, hopefully growth for the community as well. And I think we've seen all, I know I've experienced that serving you at least last three years. So I really appreciate that. And so thank you very much for that opportunity. And now, does anyone have any questions for us? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so my question is for probably Cindy and Reverend Kathy. Um, what do you feel we would need to do, or where do we have to go, or? What would be the future of bringing a healing service back? And what 
do we see right now is holding us from doing that? Is it just the number of healers available? Is there? So I'm just opening and opening a discussion on what would we need to do to bring healing back to Unity North. So basically, what we would need is we need more healers. Right Hold now, we have five. Whoops. Hold it up to your mouth. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so we would need more healers. Um, right now we have five healers, um, and um, and healers would need to be on the healing team, and that is, I think, been the because we used to have a lot of healers, but nobody was will, or very few were willing to come back on the team, and then we don't have that interest in the um, congregation. So we would need to have more people that are interested in having that. So if we can, um, if, if people would let us know if they are interested in that, but we would, the mo most important thing is we need the healers. So how would we go about um, finding out interest from the congregation? It's kind of like a catch-22. We haven't had it. We might have new people that have never experienced it. Um, our numbers are down, so maybe we don't need as many healers because we don't have as many people attending live here. Um, so Chris, any questions about a survey or how we um, would? We're not ready for it yet. We don't have enough people back yet. So there has to be a larger congregation first. Okay. So, so we're getting there little by little, but it's going to take a little longer. So I just got back from Mexico, and I bought my granddaughter these tiny little maracas made out of gourds, and I bought Ophelia a drum. And it reminded me of how much I loved our Easter drumming. I'm going to get a little emotional. Um, so my desire is that we try that. We have a potluck. We do Easter service. We do the potluck, and we do drumming. That was such a huge piece of our community. And I also think that it might be a nice way to um, invite people back with an event that always really spoke. I think a lot of people stay virtual because it's convenient. Um, and it's habit, and this might be just a nice way for people to come. It might work, it might not work, but I know those maracas need to be shook. <laughs> so that's my desire, it, and Easter is coming up real soon. So that's what I have. Help, help me remember that, Nancy. I will. Okay. Anyone online have anything? I'm not seeing any hands. Any other questions? All right. Any other questions this morning, <laughs> afternoon, whenever it is? <laughs> Lost track. All right. Then I would just like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, each of you make a difference in this community, and we appreciate all of you. And we will close with prayer. But first, I would like to call for a motion to adjourn. All right. All right. Thank you, Tracy and Christine. And um, all in favor? All right. And anyone opposed? Anybody want to stick around a little longer? <laughs> All right. All right. The motion is carried. Thank you very much. And I think there is food in the... Um, yes. Yeah, Christine has been busy preparing food for us, so those of you who want to stay to eat. And thank you for those of you who have been online with us. Um, thank you all for staying and being here. <laughs> Good job. All right, you want to close us out with prayer? Yes, that's right. I was going to do a prayer, wasn't I? <laughs> okay. So, loving spirit, we give thanks for a wonderful meeting, for our board members who are departing and for those who are incoming we just know 
uh, this transition is blessed. And we just bless the new board members coming on knowing that they carry the torch forward. And just for all of the good coming forth in the remainder of this year, we know and call upon the power of grace and gratitude to see us through. And we say thank you, thank you, God, for all the help and loving support. And so it is. Amen.